Yes, sir. He says, chapter 51, verse 3. For Yahweh shall comfort Yehuda. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Edom, and her desert like the garden of Yahweh. Joy and gladness <laughs> shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. The land of Israel, the land that was given us, not just that little sliver of land, but the land that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes of Israel, which is our inheritance, which Jeremiah has the deeds to, is the land from the river Nile to the great river Euphrates. The first question, right? It says it's going to become as the Garden of Eden, right? And then spread out to the earth. That's where the Garden of Eden was before. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read Yes, sir. Verse 4. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. The laws of the new covenant. That's written in your heart and your mind. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The isle shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Amen. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, Amen. and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. <clears throat> but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Praise shall. Hearken unto me. You that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Listen to what he said. He said, the first commandment, the very first commandment was, Hear, yeah. O Israel. Amen. Now he said, listen unto me. Right. You that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law, if you don't have his law in your heart and your mind, you don't know nothing about righteousness. You can say what you want to. Come right. on. Because what did what did uh, what was it said to our people in the wilderness? It shall be our righteousness as we do all the things contained in the, in this law. Mm -hmm. And what did Yahweh say? Uh, Moses told the uh, children of Israel, "This this law here is your wisdom, your knowledge, and understanding among all the nations." Is that what he said? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Look out today. Where's the wise? Where's the prudent? We haven't even gotten the leaders, man. Go ahead. Last part, verse 7. Fear you not the reproach of men, neither be you afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. <coughs> but my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, my brother, uh, 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 skip down to verse, uh, uh, verse 11. Yes, sir. Therefore the redeemed of Yahweh shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. The redeemed is going to receive what? Everlasting joy. Mm -hmm. Once they return to where? Zion. Mm -hmm. That's in Jerusalem, Israel. Mm -hmm. Ain't no Zion in heaven. Mm -hmm. You believe that? <laughs> see? They tell what? Well, see? The, 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 uh, the Messiah told his apostles, say, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And when I come, I can receive you to myself, right? Mm -hmm. He hasn't come yet. Right. Has he? Right. And the place that he went to prepare will not come until a thousand years after he returns to this earth. Mm -hmm. This is why the book of Revelation tells me that, that the people that got victory over the beast, they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Now, Christians tell me, say, well, see, what's going to happen? The Europeans think we crazy. Right. <laughs> see? They say, what's going to happen is this. We're going to miss all this great tribulation. We ain't none of that stuff going to happen to us, child. Mm -hmm. We're going to be switched off to Never Never Land, and we're going to be in heaven for a thousand years with Christ. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to come back down on this earth, and then he's going to reign on earth. That is what I read. Paul said glory and honor to Jew first. Mm -hmm. 
all the covenants was made with the people out of the house of Israel. Mm. This whole book was written by the house of Israel. The people that went out and talked to the nation with the house of Israel. The covenants was made with the house of Israel. Mm. And they God, God, Yahweh's holy name was Israel. Mm. And he surnamed his people that, right? Yeah, and then right. he and then folks gonna tell, he said, This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise, right? All of the prophets, the Messiah came out of the house of Israel, right? And these Europeans gonna tell me they got it. Mm. Something is wrong with that. But see, we don't know because we don't study to show ourselves approved. We go to be entertained. We like to be entertained. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So we leave the clubs, the one that go to the club, we leave the clubs on the Sabbath night. And then on the first day of the week, we go into the whole house and sit up, quiet, electrified, preacher talk, smooth things, things that you can deal with, right? Mm -hmm. And then we pay him, and then we go on about our business, mm -hmm. right? So that give us leeway to do the same thing the whole week again. Go ahead, brother. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. This yin yang ain't do it by speaking in tongues. That was started by the charismatic Christians right down here. Black folks do everything but handle them snakes. <laughs> <laughs> they fall all out on the floor and kick and talk that yin yang Paul and told him, say, look, if a trumpet give an unknown sound, you won't know whether to go to the war, war or not. Right. See? Let every man speak plain so that the church can be edified. Mm -hmm. If he's speaking in an unknown tongue, let him have an interpreter and don't let but one speak now and then another one speak later on. See? But if, you did, but if you don't have an interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. Mm -hmm. And when he say something, you say, if he speak with an if he speak with, you know, and I don't understand him, how can I say amen? Mm -hmm. right. right, but we'll stand up in church and watch somebody go all through them freaky changes with that unclean spirit all in them. And know what we'll say? Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. Amen. Child, sister, and brother, so-and-so, they tow up the church. Right. Right. <laughs> right. If a nigga come in here and I don't, I don't spend. <laughs> when I get off and I deliver, so uh, 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 week after next, uh, whenever it come. When I get off and I deliver, if a nigga come in here and jump up and interrupt my my service, you know what that brother right there gonna do? <laughs> Grab him and try to sling him through that glass. <laughs> right. hey, Let things be done decently and in order. When you jump up here speaking in one of them unknown tongues, you are out of order. Now, if you raise your hand <coughs> and I'm speaking, I'm going to stop so you can speak because these are my instructions. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what the Spirit's going to tell you. Mm -hmm. See, But if you come in here with some of that yin-yang, and, uh, and, and, uh, 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 and I know that you've been coming to this church, and I know that you was born and raised in America, and you come in some of that yin-yang, you're going to have to get out of here. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to disrupt my class. And if you fall out and, and, and fall all on the floor, I'm going to pray against you while you fall. <laughs> What, what about that time uh, Martin Luther King's uh, niece came up? Yeah, Martin Luther King's came yeah. to church and started praying, speaking in tongues, and one of us was saying, Amen. <laughs> yeah, she said, Can I pray? <laughs> I said, Yeah, sister, can't nobody stop you. Ain't nobody going to forbid you to pray. Well, I pray in tongues. I said, Well, I ain't going to say Amen. <laughs> And she went through all them changes, all them changes. I'm sitting there looking at this woman. What the hell is she saying? <laughs> Who is she calling on now? You know, and I'm looking around, everybody looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't the nobody at right. Then, a little while later, she come out with her little pamphlet book. Mm. Talking about some of the things that she's heard over to the church, and she done got, she done meshed that with that junk she already got from the <laughs> Europeans, and got folks right right here now calling her Reverend King. Mm. Reverend Doctor. Reverend Dr. King. Yeah. Go on to read. Reverend King. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, you remind me of something I was telling your parents about something that happened to me in, in uh, one of these Sunday churches. Uh, they used to uh, got hooked up in dancing mm -hmm. and everything, and so. Uh, music was all hyped up and I was just dancing and spinning around and around and around. I tripped over my foot. Mm -hmm. I fell down and hit my head on the bass. Mm -hmm. And the people ran over to me and said, leave him alone, leave him alone. He out of the spirit. He out of the spirit. Leave him alone. 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 Le
<laughs> yeah, brother, I'll tell you something else you have to notice, too. Especially the white boys, Jack. They come up to them folks, man, they have on the stage and pop them in the head like that, Jack, and knock them down. <laughs> Back 15 feet trying to get me to fall. Right. <laughs> pushing his stomach. Pushing his stomach. Yeah. Push me down. Right. It's all a show. It's but see, this it. is what our people like. Yeah. Our people like that show. Oh, yeah. And that pompous service. We love it. Yeah. Yeah. Go on and read, Brother Sarkis. Where was I at? Verse 9? I don't know, but go okay. on and read. <laughs> because, uh, if you don't, we're going to be sitting right up here at 6 o'clock. Uh -oh. right. I'm going to finish this class today. I ain't been finishing each week. I'm going to finish yeah. today. Go ahead and read. I'm trying to anyway. Okay, uh, Isaiah 51, verse 12. I, even I, am he that comforted you. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass, and forget of Yahweh your maker that have stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth, and have filled continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. Right, well, I'm fear. I'm afraid, man. Man, this man, he might take my house. Mm -hmm. He might take my car. Mm -hmm. right. Don't belong to you no way. Right. United mm -hmm. States government claims imminent domain. They come take your house and build up. Put a latrine there. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing nobody, as long as uh, according to the, the, the code, the, 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 the zoning code, they put what they wanted in. It ain't nothing you can say. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Verse 14. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loose, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. This is why our job is so urgent. See? We're, we're, entering, we're entering into uh, 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 the latter days. I mean, we're coming to the end of the latter days. Like the prophet said, in the latter days, you shall consider it. And this is what we're doing because the job is very urgent. The beast is not wasted any time, and we know it. We know it. We ain't got time to go home and, and watch. I, we ain't got time to go home and watch these damn gladiators. But what do we do? The games come on. Commercial, we go into the bathroom, come back. Right? What about the lost sheep of the house of Israel? I mean, which is more important? Huh? What are you going to attain besides some bet that you made because Atlanta won? Huh? How is that going to glorify the God of Israel? Ain't neither one of them going to come in that door there. You know why? They consider us a cup. Evander Holyfield didn't give us no money, but he gave Creflo a Rolls Royce, didn't he? Gonna read, brother. And Creflo know about as much about the only thing Creflo know about this book here is how to get your money. <laughs> Him, Eddie Long, and all them folks, they're about your money. That's Jasper William, they're about your money. Right. That's why they, they're making the money all with them books and everything they putting out, right? What do we do? We give away our stuff here, brother. Read this here. Don't read, brother. Why do we give things away? Because Yahweh provides. The monies that come in this congregation, they come in here to further this gospel. That's what it's about. It ain't about me riding around in no brand new El... I love El Dorado. <laughs> Y'all want to know the truth? I like, I love them silk suits too. <laughs> them $150 shoes and uh, 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 and all that stuff, brother. Knox 75s and Knox 100 hats. I love that kind of stuff, brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother. But see, I prefer something simple because it's cheap. Praise God. And it don't make people think, well, we see where y'all money going. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna put no money in there cause child, Preacher do this and the preacher do that. I don't never even know how much money we got. You know why? It ain't my job. That's his job. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I never go up to him and say, man, how much money we got? I don't need to know that. David tried to count the folks, didn't he? <laughs> well, I ain't gonna count the money. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and read, brother. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 15. But I am Yahweh, 
Your Elohim that divided the sea whose waves roared. Yahweh of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in your mouth, and I have covered you in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth, and say unto Yehuda, you are my people. Amen. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which have drunk at the hand of Yahweh the cup of his fury. You have drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. Mm -hmm. There is none to got her among all the sons whom she have brought forth. Where are our leaders? Huh? Mm -hmm. There's none to got us. The last leaders that we that we elected and followed behind, most of them dead, and the ones ain't dead might as well be dead because they fled, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Huh? They abandoned us, didn't they? led us right into this lion's mouth, and then they backed up. And here we are today. Look at our children in the street, man. That's all we got. We live in our life for our children. It's our children that we're going to make prince and princesses in the land. And look at them. And we can't do nothing about it. You know why? The system grabbed us. And the system tell us, don't you hit that boy. If you hit that boy, I'm going to put you in jail. Yeah, go ahead, Rick. Well, you bro. made a good comment that time we had that show, and uh, who was that, Tyrone Brooks was on there? Mm -hmm. And they asked him about what happened to the civil rights movement after King was killed. He said the leaders dropped the ball. They did. And guess what? Brothers and sisters sat around here for six weeks mm -hmm. trying to figure out how they're going to ease this brother up into admitting what had happened, right? Mm -hmm. And they got on there, my brother Daniel talked about 10 minutes prepping this brother, prepping this brother. Then they asked him, say, what happened? He said, they dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. And I fell off, I laughed so hard, I fell off the bed. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, they done, they done tried to, they done tried to, to, to uh, uh, push this brother in the corner to make him say something, which the truth was, why well, don't, mm -hmm. our leaders don't care nothing about us. Our leaders don't care nothing about us. The only thing our leaders care about is money. That's all they care about. You think Jesse Jackson care about you? He ran for president, no then. You think he care about you? No. I wouldn't vote for him to be city dog catcher. You know why? You know why? He was in Chicago when we went and talked to Martin Luther King about who he was, right? And the C he's the one, I'll always believe that he's the one that told the CIA what happened because there were three people there. Martin Luther King, Ralph David Abernathy, and Jesse Jackson. Abernathy didn't go nowhere, neither did King go anywhere, but the CIA tells Martin Luther King, if you, he's top nigga. He's the king. If you tell folks what you heard in that room there, we're going to kill you. And his last speech reflected it, didn't he? He said, I want to live as much as any man, but death don't bother me now. He said, I want you to know tonight, uh, I've been to the mountaintop. I've looked over and I've seen Israel, the promised land. I may not get there with you, but we as a people would get to the promised land in this day. And they blew that brother away. You know why? He was so powerful. If you'd have been a little nigga like me, man, they'd look around and say, man, they don't about paying no attention there. Them folks over there where you go to church at don't even listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> Got some of them walking around trying to take over and talking about what they think. <laughs> go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Last part, verse 18. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she have brought up. These two things are come unto you. Who shall be sorry for you? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword, by whom shall I comfort you? Hmm. Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. Carjacker. Mm -hmm. <coughs> See? Very true. Selling crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. Riding down the street. Three o'clock in the morning with a five hundred dollar car and a two thousand dollar. 2,500 amp stereo right. blasting in the neighborhood at 4 o'clock in the morning, and he's standing on the side of the car with his damn pants hung down here. Right. Standing on the corner, belling like bulls. Right. 
The only reason. Something brother. to rip off if they say something to him. Of course, brother. That's why I leave these young brothers Shoot alone. On the spot. See, the policeman told my son that. The policeman told my son that, man. Some things came up, and my daughter, my baby girl called the policeman, and the police, I told my son, I told the policeman, I said, man, what's going to happen to our kids, man, when they get out in the street? He said, we're going to kill them. Right. Just point blank. Yeah. I said, boy, that's what I've been telling you? Ain't nobody trying to hide nothing no more. Uh -huh. They're after us. Uh -huh. What's happening to the black male? i tell you what's happening to the black male. Satan is pouring his wrath out upon uh -huh. the black male. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Last part, verse 20. They are full of the fury of Yahweh, the rebuke of your Elohim. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hear now this, you afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus says your Adonai. Right. We Yahweh. drink with these religions. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 22. Thus says your Adonai, Yahweh, and your Elohim that pleaseth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of your hand the cup of trembling, mm. even the dregs of the cup of my fury. You shall no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict you, which have said to your soul, Bow down that we may go over. And you have laid your body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Mm -hmm. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Judah. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy holy city. Uh, uh, hold up, brother. Somebody get that thing there and blow it. We were supposed to blow the trumpet last night, right. but we didn't blow it. It's still the feast of the trumpets. Blow that thing, please. Don't need no mouthpiece. Just puck up your lips and blow in it. <laughs> he blew the trumpet. He blew the trumpet. Brother, I hate to be out there in that wilderness. <laughs> Waiting for the trumpet of the Lord to sound. But then I hear that. If the trumpet make an unknown sound, we don't know whether it's going to go or not, will we? <laughs> but it's, that's all right, brother. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just try to blow the trumpet. That's all right. I thought you played, didn't you play, what, what, what instrument you played in school? You played it with a mouthpiece. Hmm? <laughs> Saxophone? Well, you should be able to play, play that. Why? You should be able to blow that, brother. You play if you if you blew if you blew a reed. You don't need a mouthpiece. They didn't say, man, go over there and bring me that forty-five dollar <laughs> berry glass and mouthpiece I got. That ain't what they did. They put that ram horn to their mouth and blew it, right? Mm -hmm. And the trumpet that was made out of silver, right? right. You blow it like this. You pluck your lip. <laughs> go on and read, Steve. Let's finish up, man. See that uh, the reason why we went on and blew this thing, huh? No, no, no. The reason why we went on and blew this thing is because the scripture tell us in Leviticus uh, tenth chapter that we have to blow the trumpet in the new moon. Mm -hmm. And on our soul and feast days. Mm -hmm. This is why I asked him to blow the trumpet, because we didn't do it last night. Right. And we got to do it before sunset. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we're in violation of Yahweh's law, you know. Mm -hmm. And whose fault is it? Mine. Yeah. Go ahead and read. I got enough blood on my hands, y'all. Go ahead he and read. says, chapter 52, last part of verse 1. For henceforth, there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Mm -hmm. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Judah. Now y'all look up on the earth now. We the only captives on the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at that now. We are not. We are not under occupation. We are captives in a strange land. Just like he told our father, he told our Abraham, say, "No of a surety that your seed will be a stranger in a land." Genesis fifteen thirteen, in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them and be afflicted for four hundred years. 
And afterwards, when they come out with great substance, in that land will I judge, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, we're going to be in a land that our fathers did not know of, right? Mm -hmm. Read the story of Solomon. Solomon did trade with all the known world and mentioned all the kings, but the king of America, uh, of the daughter of Babylon, didn't he? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Go ahead and read it, brother. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Verse 3. For thus says Yahweh, you have sold yourself for naught, and you shall be redeemed without money. Hmm. For thus says Adonai Elohim, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Right, we went down to Egypt, 70 people strong. And Yahweh raised up Moses and brought us out. 500,000 men didn't even count the w women and children after uh, 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 430 years, right? Mm -hmm. Then later on, after we got in our land, the Assyrians came in there and pressed us, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't have no cause to do that, man. But why did they do it? Because one of our knucklehead kings had went over there and hired somebody else. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't pay the tribute like the prophet told him to do. Jeremiah told him, man, do what you're supposed to do so the people can live and we stay in the land. Right. They said, man, you a traitor. Nigga, you Uncle Tom. Mm, right. And when the, when the Arabs came into Jerusalem, brother, they had him down in the dungeon in the king's palace, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And brought that brother, I said, man, if you want to go down to Babylon, go. If you want to go down to Egypt, go. Wherever seems good to you to go, Jeremiah, you go, because I know who you are. Mm -hmm. But our people didn't know. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. And the man was around him every day. See, that, that showed you what happened. A prophet is without honor among his own people. Exactly. Like the Messiah said, if I done went to the Gentile, they would have heard me. But all day long, I stretched out my hand to a disobedient and gainsaying people. And I tell you what you do, if you don't think so, hang around in this congregation the next week and listen to the junk that's going to come out of some of these folks' mouths. That's all you got to do. You ain't got to go across the street to find it. Look right in the own family. Go ahead and read Yes, sir. Verse 5. Now, therefore, what have I here, says Yahweh, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, says Yahweh, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that says unto Judah, your Elohim reigneth. Praise Yah. Your watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when Yahweh shall bring again Judah. Now, all of the watchmen, if you notice now, there are some controversial <laughs> things between the watchmen that set up today. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything to deal with to do with your salvation, basically. But it's a lot of little controversies between uh, uh, between the priest of the earth today, right? But see, once the Messiah set these things up, see, all that's going to disappear, mm -hmm. because in that day, all of us shall see. see. None of us know it all. This brother got a little bit of it, and that brother got a little bit of it. And my thing is this, is a brother when we share the knowledge that we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, y'all, them brothers over there, man, they don't believe in Jesus. Yes, we know we don't believe in Jesus, but uh -huh. we believe in Yahshua HaMashiach. Right. Uh -huh. Now, if you want to call him Jesus, then that's what you're going to call him. I still believe. Mm -hmm. We just got different names. Mm -hmm. so don't tell them, them brothers over there worshiping the new moon. No, I'm not. Wait a minute. I, <laughs> Read the book of Numbers. Mm -hmm. Go through the book and you're going to find out people always kept the Feast of New Moon. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, <coughs> you want to keep the festival of dedication that was set up by man. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to you wanna keep, keep the Feast of Purium that was set up by man. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to keep the winter, the winter solstice and call it Christ's birthday by man. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to keep the spring equinox that always comes on the same day of the week. I never right. understood that. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 8. <coughs> Verse 9, I'm sorry. Break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For Yahweh have competent his people. He have redeemed Jerusalem. Amen. 
Yahweh have made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our Elohim. Mm -hmm. Depart you, depart you. Go you out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go you out of the midst of her. Be clean that bear the vessels of Yahweh. Be clean that bear the gifts of Yahweh. You have the gift, you better keep yourself together as best you can. Because, see, uh, if you misuse the holy things of the children of Israel, you're going to suffer for it. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 12. <laughs> for you shall not go out without, for you shall not go out with hate. You ain't going to be in no hurry when you leave that country. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Nor go by flight. For Yahweh will go before you, and the heir of Israel will be your real world. Right. I'll be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in front of you, and I'm going to be your real God, just like it was when you came out of Egypt. I had an angel in front of you, right? And then I had an angel behind you, didn't I? Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at you, his beasts were so marred more than any man, and his far more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. What haven't been told them is the truth in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what haven't been told them, because that's why they got all these different lives. That's why they got so many different denominations. They never could get them white folks' lives straight. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form, nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Like John said, behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. But how was he supposed to be? John say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Satan believes. Amen. All the demons believe. A whole lot of folks believe, but you have to believe according to the doctrine, Detail. not according to man. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 4. Surely he have borne our griefs, and carry our sorrow. Right. This is why he said he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many. See? The Bible say he as many as received him. I said the topic was who he came to as his own. Right. As many of his own as received him gave he them power to become the sons and daughters of God. If, if, if the European and the rest of the nation receive glory and honor at the same time Israel do, do then glory and honor can't be to the Jew first. It's going to be during the first resurrection that the nation attain to eternal life. You got to have the first uh, uh, house of Judah. The first dominion is always going to be given to the house of Judah. When the war comes about, who goes in the battle first? The house of Judah. The, the house of Judah, according to the prophet Zechariah, the house of Judah is the majestic white horse that the Messiah is going to ride in the bad lane. Okay. And from what we read, we read where Judah went and took the city before the Messiah came, didn't we? And then the Messiah showed up when they brought all the mommies up there to destroy our people. The Messiah showed up and put out all rule on earth, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And nobody went to heaven, not even the Billy Goat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim, and afflicted. Right, he died a curse, because the scripture said, Cursed be the man that hangs on the tree. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded because of our sin. That's right. Because Yahweh made covenants with us. So the Messiah had to come to redeem them that was under the first testament, just as Saul said. 
This is why the first European to hear the word of, uh, of the Yahweh Elohim and the Messiah was who? Cornelius. And that was 10 years after Christ was resurrected from the dead. We had to have time to set the churches in place. Go ahead and read, brother. He hold was up, bruised. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, brother, when you don't read the entire story, you come up with religion. No doubt about it. When you don't read this book here, you're going to come up with the grave. Mm -hmm. and that lake of fire. Now, you can believe that. Mm -hmm. You can believe that. This is why the scripture says study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. But see, we don't study. What we do, we get in that New Testament, and we get to rallying around in that New Testament. Say, see, Messiah was meant for naught. Say, yeah, okay, if that's what you want to believe. But he said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. No, he came into the wild. He came to the law. He said, I'm not sent, but to the law sheep of the house of Israel. Now, you deal with that the way you want. And all the prophets verified it. That's who he was sent to. That's what we're reading right now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. What did Saul say? He said, look. The things that them Europeans sacrificed to, mm -hmm. they sacrificed to devils. Mm -hmm. And I would not that you have fellowship with devils, right? right. Why do you think they worship on Sunday? Mm -hmm. huh? Why do you think they're getting ready to have Halloween, all Hallow's Eve? Huh? Mm -hmm. Why do you think? Why do you think these things are allowed in the church? Mm -hmm. Because they worship the adversary, the devil, and anything is fair in, in Satan's house. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and Yahweh have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Right. But see, them Europeans was alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and without Elohim in the world, right? Until what? <coughs> Yahweh sent Peter down there told Peter, say, you go down there and, uh, and to Joppa, uh, uh, you go, you follow these people and go on down there to Caesarea because I sent an angel down there to Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Peter said, man, I've never eaten anything coming unclean, man. Right. You know, go down there and no white folks. Right. But Yahweh showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Mm -hmm. And Peter knew what the deal was. This is why he took them brothers with him so he had proof of what he went down there for and that the spirit sent him because he knew what the Sanhedrin was going to uh, high court was going to do to him in Jerusalem <coughs> when he came back because the Romans the white folks had put our rules in place the same way ain't that who gave us Martin Luther King come on right. John F. Kennedy just sent $75,000 down to Selma to get that uh, that movement started and the only reason they didn't uh, choose uh, David Abernathy was because David was an honorary minister king had letters right. mm -hmm. that's why he was chosen go ahead and read brother. Mm -hmm. now the son's walking around acting like damn idiots right. mm -hmm. here's one of here abernathy's mm -hmm. son get caught no he coming from another country right. i can understand if you're in the u.s province you understand in the u.s province when you got a plane going where well, you got to go when you coming from another country and you come through your united states custom they're gonna bring that dog and that dog will come and say, you sit right down. <laughs> then they take this meathead in the room and strip search him and find two joints. This nigga coming to the country, he ain't got sense enough to bring something that's worth something. He ain't get busted for two joints in his shorts. Show you how stupid the children of our leaders are. But who is this that's turning that thing upon their own head? Mm -hmm. Yahweh, I yell him. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was Hold cut up, off. Go ahead. 
for he was cut off out of the land of the living. Uh, We're going to have to need a bigger place because y'all going to have to start making your children sit here with you. Y'all going to have to have make the children sit here with you or either you're going to have to get, have to get another place and put the women and the children over there. I don't see how that's going to work. Mm-hmm. One of the two. This happened every week, sister. Mm-hmm. Every week we got them yes. kids back there acting the fools. Mm-hmm. One place or another. Mine, yours, and everybody else. I'm not excluding mine because mine just as bad as anybody else's kid. But we need to get them kids on. We need to sit them kids down beside you. Mm-hmm. See, you know how to make them be quiet. Mm-hmm. You know how to make them be quiet. We show up and say, shut up. <laughs> See, do it once and you don't have to worry about it next week. And ain't nobody in here going to call the police and tell you you're abusing your children. If you spoil that rod, you're going to spoil that child. Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse. Eight. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Not for the whole world, but for the transgression of the children of Israel was he smitten, because the covenant was made with the house of Israel in the house of Judah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, bro. Verse 9. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He <coughs> hath put him to grief. When you shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pledge of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. Praise Yah. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. Praise God. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Amen. And this is the reason why he was called, he'll be called King of Kings. Lord of Lord. Jeremiah chapter. See, so I'll go ahead and read the rest of this when you get home. Because what we are reading is something you must know, and that is the new covenant. So I cover as much of the new covenant as I can. A whole lot of the things I want you to read yourself because I can talk about the Creator, but you're going to find it when you read in your own book. I can't show you who it is. Uh, 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 Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 19 through verse 27. Give me Yahoo chapter 17 and verse 19 through verse 27. Thus said Yahweh unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Yehuda come in, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say unto them, Hear you the word of Yahweh, you kings of Yehuda, and all Yehuda, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus says Yahweh, take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, neither do you any work, but hallow you the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. Hallow it. Right? Make it holy. <coughs> Honor it. Set it aside, right? Mm-hmm. First thing you Christian changed was the Sabbath, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. The first thing Yahweh blessed and sanctified was the Sabbath, and he enjoined that to our people. Mm-hmm. And that's the first thing that the Christian changed was the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Them Europeans knew what they were doing. We just don't know. Because we don't care. We want to die right here with Master. Mm-hmm. Why do you think we joined the Civil War? Go ahead and read, bro. Why do you think we're in the service now? Because we ready to die for mass. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 23. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. And it shall come to pass, if you diligently hearken unto me, says Yahweh, 
to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Mm -hmm. Then shall thou enter into the gates of this city, kings and princes, sitting upon the throne of David, mm -hmm. riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Yehuda, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. If you can just keep a Sabbath. And this city here is going to remain forever. Just, just, just keep my Sabbath, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Verse 26. And they shall come from the cities of Yehuda, and from the places about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, and meat offerings, and incense, and bringing sacrifices of praise, unto the house of Yahweh. This is going to happen. We know that they're going to have to set up that animal sacrifice again in the first resurrection because the lamb has already died. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to use that blood again as a perpetuation of man's sin until all the man be given eternal life either in the lake of fire or in the new, on, the new heaven, on the new earth rather mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the Messiah has already prepared among the mansions for the angels of God. Mm -hmm. so go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 27. But if you will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Amen. So the fire is still burning among our people. Chapter 16 and verse 9 through verse 21, my brother. Chapter 16 and verse 9 through verse 21. But thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And it shall come to pass when you shall show this people all these words, and they shall say unto you, Why have Yahweh pronounced all this great evil against us? All what is our iniquity, all what is our sin that we have committed against Yahweh, our Elohim, then shall you say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says Yahweh, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law, and you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, you walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Don't they do it? They don't receive no law in the church, right? So every man live like he want to live. Mm -hmm. This is what I think. This is what I think. This is what I feel. Right. It ain't got nothing to do with what Yahweh said. All they got to do is sin, what sin for flesh, what, what, what your ego tell you to believe in. What that demon that came up to you and say, check this out, brother. And brother, you know, uh, Elder, you know one thing about it. Most Christians that you run into, they'll come up with these contradictions in the Bible. That's because they don't know the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's because they've never studied the Bible. They might have read it. But I know I've been studying it for 25 years. It's getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Always running into new angles mm -hmm. on things. The spirits come here, you thought you knew something then? Check this out. Mm -hmm. Flesh and blood can't reveal certain things to you. Only, only the spirit of Yahshua HaMashiach can reveal these things. Uh, go ahead and read. Verse 13. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that you know not, neither you nor your fathers, and there shall you serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. Ain't that the way it is? Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. Amen. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Ain't that what he said in Ezekiel 37, chapter, dry bones in the valley? He said, I'm going to open your grave. He said, I'm going to bring them bones back. I'm going to open your graves. I'm going to bring them bones back to his gather, bone to his bone. I'm going to put muscles on those bones. 
flesh going to cover that. I'm going to put skin over it. And I'm going to put my breath in you. And I'm going to bring you back to the land of Israel. Hey, that's what he said. Huh? We read that last week, right? Mm-hmm. That ain't what I hear in church. That ain't what I hear in church. One of our beloved uh, members, uh, had, the wife died this week, and uh, they having their funeral today. Mm. Out of all day, he allowed them to have it today. Today. Mm. Why today? Today is Yahweh's Sabbath, and it is the feast of the new moon. You paying the bill, why didn't you have to do it on their holiday? Mm. But what it does, see, it keep people out of, from keeping uh, the covenant that they had, uh, 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 that the Messiah sealed with his own blood. He said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You shall have a holy convention, a gathering of my saints, right? right. Hmm. But it shows you what happened, brother, when, when there's iniquity in your house. And when Satan come up in there, you can see the suffering where, where it starts at. It begins at the house of Yahweh. Last week when we read when the angel went, when uh, uh, one of the angels told another angel, Mikael told one of those angels, say, go in there in that city and you destroy every man who ain't got Yahweh's mark on him, right? Mm-hmm. And begin where? At my sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just as charity begins at home here and spreads abroad, so does wrath. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 16. Behold, I was sent for many fishes. That's my job. Fishing. Right? Fishing this lake for a while. Don't catch nothing. Fishing that lake. <laughs> Fishing this lake. Don't catch nothing. Just fishing that lake. Go ahead, bro. Says Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. After I send these fishing, fishermen, now I'm going to send hunters. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, brother. And they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rock. Hunt them for what? To throw away the chaff and bring the righteous right back into the city, right? Yes, sir. He said they're going to stumble. He said, I'm going to lead them in a way that they've not been. See, I'm going to lead them through paths path that they knew not. I'm going to cause them to walk by the rivers and talking about the turmoil on the earth in a straight way. He said a thousand is going to fall on one hand and ten thousand on, on the other hand, but it ain't going to come near you. Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. Yeah. Go ahead and read, brother. See all these covenants. You've got to know the covenant. If you don't know the covenant, you don't know what Yahweh had to say. That's why I read the covenant. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 17. We read the old one, didn't we? We read the one maybe. Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, Dave, Israel, David, and uh, Israel under the new covenant, right? We, we read all the covenants. Why? Because Yahweh is a covenant God. And you have to know what he says. You got to know what your promise is. Because you may not like the reward he offers. Right. You may want to go up and help. Uh oh. He ain't going to let you come up there. That was created for the angels, Yahweh. Israel, Yahshua, and the 24 elders. That's why when we get in Revelation, that's all you saw in heaven. Go ahead and read, brother. Praise God. Verse 17. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Because they have defiled my land, they have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. And we are the recipients of all that wrath, of all that anger. We are the recipients of it. Go ahead, bro. Verse 19. O Yahweh, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction, the Europeans shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Hmm. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no God? Mm-hmm. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahweh. They're going to know what my name is. See, they've been calling me Lord, God. No, that stuff. They're going to know that my name is Yahweh, right? O.C. Hosea 2 and chapter 14 through verse 23. Hosea 2 and chapter 14 through verse 23. Hosea is one of the books uh, back toward the uh, 
uh, uh, the back of the uh, uh, Old Testament, going toward the New Testament, is back behind Ezekiel and all them other prophets, the big prophets, Daniel. O.C. is right behind uh, the book of Dan uh, Daniel. <coughs> the beloved Daniel. Like the angel told, boy, there's something good to say. The angel come to Daniel and say, oh man, oh man of God, you are greatly beloved. Ain't that something, man? That is something, buddy, here, the angel of the Lord. They say, you greatly beloved, man. Yeah, make you want to jump and shout, turn flips. <laughs> I know that's the way I feel when y'all will reveal something to yeah, me, but I feel good. Man, I be wanting to jump up and die. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, you go, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead now. Uh, 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 read, brother. Verse, O.C. chapter 2, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Like Jeremiah said, at the fall of America, the children of Israel and the children of Judah is going to come going weeping as they go saying, show me the way to Zion with their face this way. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's going to let no 30, 40 million of us in their country? The Africans ain't going to even let us in there and all that land they got. Because they know we loaded down with them curses and they know we ain't going to follow nobody. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. I'll show you what I mean. Look over a million people marched on Washington, right? Mm. What the hell have they done? Right. Huh? Mm. They done had two million women marches, right? Mm. The women done did more than the men. Mm. And that ain't nothing, really. Mm -hmm. mm. Go ahead and read, bro. Now his next plan is to have a, fa a family march. That's what he's talking about now. Man, <laughs> Farrakhan want to be king. Mm -hmm. And the United States government wants him to do just what he's doing. That's why they're funneling money into his project. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. The best way to trick your enemy is to lay in the bed with him. Mm -hmm. And white folks figured that out a long time ago. Mm -hmm. See, we haven't figured it out. You know we say? Oh, they're trying to help. They're some good folks. Mm -hmm. Read, man. Verse 15. <coughs> And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of a core for a door of hope. Now, when you get a chance to read Isaiah 65 in verse 8 and 10, it's going to talk about the valley of a core again. And we'll go back and read it in Joshua. When Joshua brought our children out uh, uh, into the land of Israel, didn't they come in through the valley of a core? Right. There's nothing new in it, son. Go ahead and read, brother. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Verse 16. And it shall be at that day, says Yahweh, that you shall call me Isha, mm. and shall call me no more Bela. You're going to call me husband mm -hmm. and no more Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Verse 17. For I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their names. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth you unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth you unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in love and kindness and in mercy. I'm going to betroth you unto me according to the new covenant. Ain't that's what happened uh, when our father, when Moses, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, when the, our people came out of Egypt, when they went up into the mountain, didn't Yahweh marry our people then? Mm -hmm. Here he is again. Right. That's why he said, where's your mother's bill of divorce, man? Mm -hmm. So I've graven you up on your palm of my hand. Your walls are continually before me, right? right. The people got the nerve to call us niggas. We even say, hey, my nigga. Uh, yeah. yeah, ain't that something else? Calling the, one, of the, one of the saints, calling him dog. Hey, dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it, bro. Trying to be like Mike. Yeah, go ahead and read, bro. Verse 20. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and you shall know Yahweh. And what? In righteousness, judgment, loving kindness, mercy, mercies. And faithfulness. Mm -hmm. What else can you ask for? Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead and read it, brother. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, says Yahweh, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Yeshua. And they shall hear Israel. Everything's going to hear Israel, right? All of the substance on the earth is going to hear Israel. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, excuse me, which were not my people, you are my people, and they shall say, you are my Elohim. Amen and amen. Amos chapter 9, and verse 8 through verse 14. Amos is the next book back, I think. No, it's behind Joel. Yeah, back behind Joel. Amos chapter 9, and verse uh, 8 through verse 14. Behold, the eyes of Adonai Elohim are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Yaakov. Hold up, brother. Hold up, let everybody find it. <coughs> Amos chapter 9, verses 8 through 14. Behold, the eyes of Adonai Elohim are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Yaakov, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Says Yahweh. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Right, because our preachers have told us we're going off to heaven. Ain't none of this stuff going to happen to us. This evil ain't going to come upon us. God lied. Mm -hmm. Told you you can't believe nothing he say. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Right. See, the Messiah don't sit on Yahweh's throne. The Messiah sits on David's throne. Amen. It's going to be a divided kingdom. It's going to be set up on the earth. Right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. The remnant of them folks over there in that land now. It's talking about their you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And of all the heathen, which are called by my name, says Elohim. And all Elohim. of the heathen that's called by what? That's called spiritual Israel. Mm -hmm. The proselytes that's, that's going to come in among them. What do you say? That they may possess the remnant of these people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Verse 13. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the tread of grapes him that sow of seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Hmm. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, says Yahweh, your Elohim. Amen and amen. Now let's go into Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 1 through verse 38. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 1 through verse 38. Ezekiel 36 and verse 1. And I think we're going through verse 38, my brother. If it's 38 chapters in there. Uh, what you need to do when you get a chance to, you need to go and read. Uh, you need to read Ezekiel 37 too when you get a chance to. Just read uh, Ezekiel uh, uh, 35, 36, and 37, and, 30, uh, and 38. Just read right on up to the end of Ezekiel. Ezekiel got some mighty powerful things to say that's mm -hmm. going to take place. Okay, brother. Ezekiel, where I told you to go? 36. 36. 
And verse 9. Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say, You mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says Adonai Elohim, Because the enemy have said against you, Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Because they have made you desolate, and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and you are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are an infamy of the people. Therefore you mountains of Israel hear the word of Adonai Elohim. Thus says Adonai Elohim to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore thus says Adonai Elohim, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all the doomia which have appointed my land into their possession with the jaw of all their heart, with the spiteful mass to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because you have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. Amen. But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are at hand to come. But they're at hand to come, right? Now, when the Israelis went over there in 1948, what they did was send them rabbis around with them Abraham Lincoln suits on, talking about, you want to buy a tree for Israel? Buy a tree for Israel. Everybody buying trees for Israel. They had bonds all on the back of the buses and things, on the billboard. Buy bonds for Israel. One million Jews killed, right? Now it's six million. And most of them, history bears out that most of them that was killed off was people from Yugoslavia, Hungary, and Turkey. Mm -hmm. And every time you talk about, look at this, these Edomites, they're trying to make the Germans pay for what they did. Mm -hmm. Go on to read, man. Yes, sir, verse 9. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of even it. Even all of it, right? I'm going to multiply all of them up on the land, right? Yeah. Well, what we got some of them over here doing over here then? Mm. Huh? What do we got other ones all over Europe and Asia and Africa? Why? Because y'all, we haven't gathered these saw. He said, I'm going to gather all of my people, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay. They've been over there 50 years, brother. And they've been had war ever since they've been over there, haven't they? Lord, ain't in that not in that land. He told them he's going to set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem that wasn't going to have, hold their peace day and night. And long as Esau and uh, Moab and Ammon, uh, 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 Abraham's nephew, lots two boys in that land calling themselves the Palestinians, and we the Palestinians, as long as they're in that land, they're going to have war from generation to generation. Ever since you heard of Israel, they've had war, haven't they? Okay, go ahead. And the city shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be built. It. Verse 11. And I will multiply upon you men and beasts, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginning, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. Right. Now, if he called what's happening over there in Israel better than they had in their beginning, obviously he didn't read the story either. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Mm. Verse 12. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people, Israel. And they shall possess you, and you shall be their inheritance, and you shall no more henceforth bereave them of men. Now he talked about the Europeans being the, the Europeans being our inheritance, right? Hamites being our inheritance. Now he's talking about Esau and uh, uh, and uh, Abraham, uh, two boys over there, being our inheritance, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. Thus says Adonai Elohim, because they say unto you, You land devoureth up men, and have bereaved your nations. Therefore you shall devour men no more, neither bereave your nations any more, 
says Adonai Elohim. Hmm. Neither will I cause men to hear in you the shame of the heathen anymore. Neither shall you bear the reproach of the people anymore. Neither shall you cause your nation to fall anymore, says Adonai Elohim. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Mm -hmm. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their weight and according to their doings, I judge. Right, he saw my duty. He saw I'm doing it. The, the, their things was un, uh, up under me. Uh, uh, their uncleanness was like the uncleanness of a removed woman. Right. Well, look at the scenario there. Uh, when a woman is unclean, what is she doing? She's passing death. Right. right? Well, look what we's doing. We pass death one to another, don't we? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Verse twenty. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of Israel that are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says Adonai Elohim, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, whither you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Elohim, says Adonai Elohim, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Once I put my spirit in you, that <laughs> is what's going to cause you to walk in my statutes and my judgment. But you ain't going to do it. Mm -hmm. And we know we ain't. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Verse 28. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. <laughs> and I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember your own evil ways, and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities, and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, says Adonai Elohim. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus says Adonai Elohim. In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be built. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Edom. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. And most of the trees that's in the land of Israel now were imported. Most of them was imported during the uh, during the early during the uh, the, the early fifth during the fifth during the late forties and the fifties. Go ahead, brother. Verse thirty six. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, Yahweh, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus says Adonai Elohim, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, so shall the way sinners be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know 
that I am Yahweh. Amen. 37 and 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, says Yahweh. Christians say that ain't true. Christians say that ain't true. They don't even want to have nothing to do with that. Listen to the preachers when they have a funeral. The body still laying there, haven't even been placed in the grave, right? And they say, well, he in heaven now. And I'm looking at this meathead laying in that casket. They ain't going to tell me he's in heaven, right? Go ahead and read, bro. Well, they say his spirit is, but he doesn't have Man, he got no spirit. Thank you. Man was given a breath of life. There wasn't no spirit. The man was given the spirit. What's the need for the Messiah have to come? Man didn't have no spirit. Adam was made a living soul. The Christian told us, man made out of body, soul, and spirit. No, he's not. Man is a living soul. That's why we used to call each other soul brother, soul sister. Right. Then we went through the civil rights movement, and then we had blue-eyed soul brothers and green-eyed soul sisters. <coughs> Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it, for Yehuda and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it, for yourself the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions, and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in your hand. Just as I broke up the 12 tribes, mm -hmm. so you take them two sticks, and you put the sticks back together so they can become a nation again. Go ahead, brother. Verse 18. And when the children of your people shall speak unto you, saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these? Verse 19. Say unto them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I will take the stick of yourself, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Yehuda, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. Mm -hmm. And the sticks whereon you write shall be in your hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountain of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And thy be my servant shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Yaakov, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Amen. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. Now we're talking about another covenant, a covenant of peace. Mm -hmm. And his sanctuary, we talk about the holy place now, not the temple. The holy place in the sanctuary, and I understand, only the men of Israel could enter there under the penalty of death. Amen. And it was even sectioned off in courts for the men of Israel and courts for the priests and courts for the high priest, was it? Go ahead, brother. Verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. I'm going to set my sanctuary. Then I'm going to set my temple in the midst of them, right? 
And he told us, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart or flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary, in, in, into my sanctuary of all the strangers that dwell among the children of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, ain't nobody going to be in there but the house of Israel. Right. Go ahead, brother. Verse 28. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Israel, right? See, this is what my brother, this European, couldn't uh, understand. Right. See, that he's not natural Israel, mm -hmm. so he cannot go into the sanctuary. No stranger can enter into the sanctuary of the true and living God except the men of the house of the children of Israel. That's who it's reserved for. This is the reason why when you got in Revelation, you saw the new city of Jerusalem, it only had 12 gates. And you have to ask the nation, where is your gate? Come on. If I don't take you in there with me, Come you on. can't go. <laughs> now run and tell that. Come on. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. Of course. Of course. Paul told him, say, he's... How you going to have somebody to teach you something? He's standing on the outer court. Right. Mm. Paul told him, say, Israel was given the covenants, the promise, the service, the giving of the law. All of the holy things of Yahweh was given to Israel. One nation of people wrote this whole book here. One nation of people was sent out to teach the nation. Now the nation done grabbed it and turned everything topsy-turvy, and look what they got us with. Over a thousand different denominations of Christianity. All of them are different conferences with charters so they can come out and get folks some money. That's all it's about. And then he ministers to them saying, uh, uh, they even got some them dudes, uh, they got some Christian now, this uh, uh, church is set up for the people that are athletes, right? Got them bodybuilders and everything. Oh, yeah. You know, Lord, come on, yeah, Jesus did this. Oh, doing yeah. the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> He's cracking doing. But that's to appease to who? Them damn Europeans. They like it like that. Go ahead and read, bro. Did you finish? Mm -hmm. You finished that, did you? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's go to chapter 39 and verse 21 through verse 29. Chapter 39 and verse 21 through verse 29. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am Yahweh their Elohim from that day and forth. Right, because they're going to see that I laid all of my, all of Israel. I done took it out of your hand, the cup, even the dredges of the cup that you, that, you, that you drank, and now I done put this in the hand of your enemy, and they're going to drink, drink deep. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Because they trespassed against me, therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim, Now will I bring again the captivity of Yaakov and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name after that they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. Hmm. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' land, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am Yahweh their Elohim, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land, and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, says Adonai Elohim. Amen and amen. Uh, uh, Zephaniah 3. And verse 8. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 8. Zephaniah is back here uh, uh, in, in the Old Testament just before, I think it's just before uh, Haggai. It's between Habakkuk and Haggai. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 8. 
Zephaniah, not Zechariah, Zephaniah 3. And pick that up at verse 8. You mean they, they're not going to talk about this tomorrow in church, bro? Who? Cool. This stuff we're talking about? No, they ain't going to talk about this. You know why? They're not going to do it. No. You know why? It's a secret. Mm. Right. Hear from the prying eyes of men. How long, how long have you been going to church before you heard? It's a secret. I went to church a couple times. I got broke, though. He said, but I did, too. <laughs> Pass some money around. I did, too. And I went over there because they told me to come. You remember? They told me to come over there. And I went over there, sat over there down that cold basement for almost two hours while folks walking back and forth, coming in, looking, looking. Then the guy called me and said, well, we decided that we ain't going to do this. We're just going to do that. That's the thing. They asked me to come over here. And then they're going to tell me some junk like this. I said, okay, thank you. I said some, a few other choice things about uh, about the Messiah, what the Messiah did uh, when uh, when he came, but uh, that didn't faze them none, brother, none whatsoever. I said, thank you very much. Y'all had a blessing to you. Go ahead, where I told you to go? Stephanie 3, chapter 3, verse 8. Yeah, pick it up at verse 8. Therefore, wait you upon me, says Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the praise. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. But then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent. One language over the whole earth, just like it was before the Tower of Babel was built. Now that the Tower of Babel is being destroyed, now we have one language again. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day shall you not be ashamed for all your doings, wherein you have transgressed against me. But then I will take away out of the midst of you them that rejoice in your pride, and you shall no more be halted because of my holy mountain. Hmm. I will also leave in the midst of you an afflicted and poor people. Preflo hadn't read this, brother. No, sir. And they shall trust in the name of Yahweh. Right. They, they don't want no poor people. Uh, Creflo said, if if if, uh, if you're on welfare, Yahweh don't want you. Hmm. No, he didn't say Yahweh. He said, God don't want you if you're on welfare. He said, check this brother here. Christ said, the poor you're going to always have with you. If I had to have something in order to deal with the word of God, y'all never would have heard. Go ahead and read it, bro. Verse 13. The remnant of Israel shall do no iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Praise y'all. Sing, O daughter of Yehuda. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Yahweh have taken away your judgments. He have cast out your enemies. The king of Israel, even Yahweh, is in the midst of you. You shall not see evil anymore. Praise Yahweh. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Judah, let not your hands be slack. Yahweh, your Elohim, in the midst of you is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love. He will draw over you with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of you, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time will I undo all that afflict you, and I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Hmm. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says Yahweh. Amen. Amen. And that's what he's doing. First, Amen. he taught us his law. He taught us his law. And that turns back our captivity to sin, to the deception of sin. Now, the next thing, the next major step is to do what? Get us out of this country here, just like Ezekiel said. He said in Ezekiel, I'm going to allure you and bring you to the wilderness. 
at the destruction of the Babylon, the children of Judah and the children of Israel are going to come uh, bringing their gold and their silver with them, right? Okay. Then he said, I'm going to bring you out into the wilderness, and two-thirds, I'm going to cut off, purge out from among you the rebels. I'm going to, two-thirds of you are going to be cut off and die. But the third part, I'm going to bring you through the fire. And you're going to be my jewels when I make up my crown. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 you finish that. Uh, chapter 44. And pick that up at verse 1. Verse 1. No, no, I'm sorry, brother. I meant to go in, in, in into Ezekiel chapter 44. But I think I'm going to leave that alone. That's about uh, the new temple that's going to be about the sons of Zodok that's going to be set up as the priest in Ezekiel chapter 44. So what you do is write that reference right there so you can go and read that. And, uh, 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 where, and then uh, Ch uh, Isaiah, chapter, uh, after Ezekiel chapter 44 in verse 1 through verse 28, you go into Isaiah chapter 60 in verse 1 through chapter 62 and verse 12. Make a note of that if you care to. And where we're going to go now, we're going to go into the book of Micah Micah chapter 4 and verse 9 through chapter 5 and verse 15. Micaiah chapter 4 and verse 5 through chapter 9 and verse 15. But Micah is a couple of pages back up toward the front of your Bible. Micaiah chapter 4 and verse 9 through chapter 5 and verse 15. For all people will walk, every one, in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of Yahweh, our Elohim, forever and ever. In that day, says Yahweh, will I assemble her that halted, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted, and my I will make her... My book don't say that. Micah chapter 4 and verse 9. Oh, I'm sorry. I started verse 5. Yeah. Okay. Micah chapter 4 verse 9, right? Mm -hmm. Now why do you cry out aloud? Is there no king in you? Mm. Is thou counselor perish? For pains have taken you as a woman in travail. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Judah, like a woman in travail. Be in pain and labor to bring forth fruit that is meat for repentance, right? Mm -hmm. Be in pain and labor like a woman in travail to bring forth fruit that's meet for repentance, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. But now shall you go forth out of the city, and you shall dwell in the field, and you shall go even to America. There shall you be delivered. There Yahweh shall redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Because we can understand that because we know that according to the scripture, the daughter of Babylon, which is America, will be the first country that's going to the whole continent is going to be destroyed mm. go ahead brother yes sir verse 11 now also many nations are gathered against thee that say let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Yehuda but they know not the thoughts of Yahweh neither understand they his counsel for he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor Arise and thresh, O daughter of Judah, for I will make your horn iron, and I will make your hoofs brass, and you shall beat in pieces many people. And I will consecrate their gain unto Yahweh, and their substance unto the Adonai of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He have laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the hey, cheek. guess what they did? Didn't they smite the Messiah with a rod upon his cheek? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you be little among the thousands of Yehuda, yet out of you shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, who's gone forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Who, he say? And you, Bethlehem, in the, in the land of Judah, right? Didn't they used to say, O little town of Bethlehem? Mm -hmm. Huh? How still we see the light? Okay. Go ahead, bro. Verse 3. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth have brought forth. 
Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. So we were given up until what? The woman in Revelations 12 chapter travail with child. And she brought forth the man child that was going to rule all nations. And then her child was caught up to Yahweh in his throne, right? And there appeared another one in heaven, a great red dragon heaven. Seven heads and ten horns and ten crowns, right? That's the whole uh, the four empires they set up on the earth. And what were they set up for? For to devour our people, right? We're not a nation no more. And the average one of us, you ask, say, where your people come from? Africa? <laughs> right? How did, how did the white man came over there and got off the boats and just went out and just robbed our people and stole people? No, he didn't. According to history, the African kings rounded us up and marched us to the west coast of Africa and sold us to the British, Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch. Mm -hmm. They didn't sell their own people. They sold the people that, that the Europeans sold to them in 70 AD when they invaded Jerusalem. Couldn't read. Verse 4. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of Yahweh, and the majesty of the name of Yahweh his Elohim. And they shall abide. But now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Praise shall. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrians shall come into our land. And when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. Praise shall. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod in the entrances thereof. In other words, they're going up into Europe. You, Assyria is in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're going off into in Africa. Nimrod was an African, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from Yahweh, as the showers upon the grass that tarries not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of man, men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Europeans in the midst of many people as a lion, a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. Amen. Your hand shall be lifted up upon your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh, that I will cut off your horses out of the midst of you, and I will destroy your chariots, and I will cut off the cities of your land, and throw down all your strongholds. Right, I'm going to tear up your weapons of war, then I'm going to tear up your city, and throw down all of your strongholds. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Verse 12. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of your hand. And you shall have no more soothsayers. Right. You won't be able to dial 1-900 no more. You won't be able to go to Miss Rudolph no more. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. Your graven images also will I cut off. Right. All them crosses and everything y'all got, I'm cutting them off too. All them crescent moon and stars and them praying heads and all them images and them fish and everything y'all got on the back of y'all car, I'm cutting all that junk off too, right? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Michael chapter 5 verse 13 your graven images also will I cut off and your standing images out of the midst of you and you shall no more worship the work of your hands and I will pluck up your groves out of the midst of you so will I destroy your cities and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Amen and amen. Now, what do we get out of out of this, out of the new covenant that we read today? We got the Yahweh said he's going to give you a new heart, a new spirit. He's going to put a sanctuary and his tabernacle in the midst of you, right? Talk about regathering Israel, the master being the king, and David the prince, right? The priesthood being restored in Ezekiel 44 through our uh, uh, Ron's son, Zodok. And uh, uh, all of the holy things of the children of Israel have been set in place once again, right? Now let's go and see how he began to do this. Let's go into St. Luke chapter 1. Pick this up at verse 1. St. Luke chapter 1. We're going to pick this up at verse 1. St. Luke chapter 1 and verse 1. 
Brother, was it the Europeans who named the our brothers and sisters of, of, of the uh, scripture saints? Who do you think it was? Okay. Don't, ain't they still making saints? Oh, yeah. They're thinking about making, uh, what that woman named? Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. Their Mother Teresa, a saint, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the only thing she knew about the Bible is nothing. <laughs> They got a catechism they go through, man. When the Catholics came in, man, they burned all the books. You see, only the monks and the, and the priests, the men who learned it, had books. They had a big barn burning, a book burning, bro. Mm -hmm. And see, uh, uh, then they began to canonize people and make them saints. Then they set up where you had to go to the priest and c make confession to your God through this man here. He'll tell you, say, my son, your sins be forgiven you. Go give $20,000 to St. Mary's Cathedral. <laughs> All of the gods that we got floating, the, the deities they got floating around in heaven, the Roman Catholic Church set them in place, right? Well, the Christians keep the same days that the Catholic Church keep. So what's the difference? They came from their mother, right? Where are they going back to? Go ahead and read, bro. Luke chapter 1, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things, which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto you in order, most excellent Theophilus that you might know the certainty of those things wherein you have been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before Yah, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Adonai, blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before Yah in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his light was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Adonai. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of Yahweh standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Right, because there wasn't nobody supposed to be in the temple while this brother, he was uh, lighting that incense. He knew, brother, if somebody else was in that temple, he was in big trouble. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear your son, and you shall call his name Johanna. Mm -hmm. And you shall have joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of Adonai, and shall drink neither wine or strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And people try to say the Holy Ghost is something new. Mm -hmm. Christ wasn't even born then. John the Baptist wasn't even born then. Mm -hmm. And Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost, wasn't he? John the Baptist, rather, would be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 16, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to Yahweh their Elohim. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias mm. to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the other nation. Now, when you get in the book of Malachi and they get so the Muslim like to go and read, behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet. He's going to do this, right? What you do then is come back here to Luke and show them that he was talking about John the Baptist. He was going to go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah. Amen. He wouldn't be Elijah. He was going to go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah. This is why uh, uh, when the apostles asked the Messiah, say, how did they say Elijah is going to come and restore all things? He said, Elijah truly must come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah just came already and they did with it what they wanted to. That was John the Baptist because truly Herod had his cut, head cut off because he had the hots for his daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 18. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, <laughs> I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of Elohim, 
and I'm sent to speak unto you and to show you these glad tidings. The brother asked a good question. He's an old man. He said, man, why should I, how, how should I know? I'm an old man and well speaking in age. The angel told him, man, I'm Gabriel. Hmm. See, I'm the one that's standing in front of the presence of the Lord, and I was sent to bring you this message, man. Now go and see what he told him. See, the angel don't like it. Verse 20. Go ahead and read. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because you believe them not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their seed. Because you didn't believe me, you ain't going to be able to talk until this, this, uh, this child here is born. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 21. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus have Yahweh dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Mm -hmm. And in the sixth month, and in the sixth, sixth month, <laughs> the angel Gabriel was sent from Elohim unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, you that are highly favored. Yahweh is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with Elohim. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yeshua. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And Adonai Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. He was going to do what to him? He was going to give him the throne of his father, David, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Yaakov forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And he shall reign over who? The house of Israel. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, <coughs> How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of Elohim. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with Elohim, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of Adonai, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Hmm. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Yehuda and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mm. And which is this to me, that the mother of my Adonai should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of your salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Right, and because this babe leaped in my womb for joy, I know that you can't the Messiah. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 45. And blessed is she that believe, for that shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Adonai. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify Yahweh, and my spirit hath rejoiced in Elohim, my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He have shown strength with his arm. He have scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He have put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he have sent empty away. 
He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how they heard how Adonai had shown great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Mm -hmm. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called Johannes. And they said unto her, There is none of your kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to Zacharias how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is Johannes. And they marveled all. And his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue loose, and he spoke and praised Yahweh. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sins were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What man of child shall this be? And the hand of Yahweh was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be Adonai Elohim of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You see what he's saying? Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of, of, of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, yeah. that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of them that hate us. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, yeah. the oath which he swore to our father Abraham mm -hmm. that he would grant unto us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Amen. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for you shall go before the face of the Adonai to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our Elohim, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and was strong in spirit and was in the deserts to the day of his showing unto Israel. Right. John the Baptist was born, and when he got grown enough, brother, he got on away from Jake, man, because he know Jake is full of trouble. He'd rather stay in the desert and hang with Jake, boy, because Jake is a mess. Yeah, go ahead and read, brother. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Now you see the names that are mentioned down through the scripture, it lets you know that this book here is the book on world history. It ain't about religion. And all you have to verify these things, all you have to do is go to the library, get on the internet. And check these folks out, and you'll find out. Hey, look here. The Bible's right on the money. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 4. And yourself also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Didn't we just read where it said in O.C.? Saying, you, Bethlehem, in the land of Yehuda are not the least among the children of Israel because out of you shall come forth the governor that shall rule my people Israel, right? That, that, that was telling you where he was going to be born, right? Go ahead, go ahead, bro. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Verse 6, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Now, when you check out when uh, uh, Sereni, uh, uh, when uh, 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 Caesar, Augustus, issued this tax, you have to understand that this wasn't in no winter time when David then went up. His wife, his mother, his wife, rather, was great with child, man. And people was in the city because there was no room at the end, right? It was a holy day going on. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 7. 
And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I bet if it had been a white woman, it had been room mm. in the inn. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Yeah, brother, it, it gets pretty cold over there in Judea. Of course. People put up their flock in the wintertime. Yeah, they, don't have it out the, they don't have their flock out in the field, shepherds sleeping in the field in the wintertime. But they did that in, in spring and summer and fall. Right. And when it started getting cold, they started putting up the, up, up down. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. And lo! The angel of Yahweh came upon them, and the glory of Yahweh shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Mm -hmm. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the anointed one, the Adonai. Mm -hmm. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall, <coughs> you shall find a babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising Yahweh and saying, Glory to Yahweh in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which Yahweh have made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Yosef and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising Yahweh for all things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yeshua, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moshe were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to Yahweh. As it is written in the law of Yahweh, every male that opened up, opened up the womb shall be called holy to Yahweh. Amen. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of Yahweh, a pair of turtle doves are two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen Yahweh's Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Yahshua to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed Yahweh and said, Yahweh now let you, your servant, depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Europeans and the glory of your people, Israel. It's going to give light to the Europeans because they're going to be saved too, but it's going to be the glory of the children of Israel. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 33. And Yosef and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising against the many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken again. Yea, a sword shall pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And that was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about 84 years old, which departed not from the temple, but served Yahweh with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instance gave thanks likewise unto Yahweh and spoke of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of Yahweh, they returned unto Galilee to their own city Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of Elohim was upon him. Three and one. 
Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Caesar, I'm sorry, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Iturea, and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias the tetrarch of Abilene, Anna and Caliphas being the high priest, the word of Elohim came unto Johanna, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Now, understand, I mean, these people that was mentioned here, they were rulers over our people. They were given their positions by the Romans. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, and pick that up at verse 1. Matthew chapter 3 at verse 1. Let's pick up the rest of the story here. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In those days came Johanan the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent you, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The boss of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Adonai, make his path straight. Mm. And the same Johanan had his remnant of camel's hair, and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of poisonous snakes, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now he's talking to the preachers and the politicians, right? Our scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. right? Okay, go ahead. Verse 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I say unto you, that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. John put a curse on them, didn't he? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose span is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. John chapter 1 in verse 26. John chapter 1 in verse 26. <clears throat> Johanan answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is whose coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth, Beth, Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where Johanan was baptized. Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. The next day, Johanan saw Yahshua coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of Elohim, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And Johanan Barakah said, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon okay, him. Okay, my brother, I don't want to go no further than that. Now, this is the champion of righteousness from the garden who would bruise the head of Lucifer. This is the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in whom all the nations of the earth would be blessed. This is the ruler who, would, uh, uh, who took the scepter of the tribe of Yehuda and would sit on David's throne forever. This is the lamb the Passover and the atonement sacrifice who will cause the sins of the house of Israel to be remembered no more and redeem us back to Yahweh our Elohim. This is the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the spirit 
who now guides the house of Israel towards salvation. Surely his hand is stretched out still to the house of Israel and whosoever grab on to the house of Israel. And the reason why these things are written here because of who you are. So that Yahweh would give you salvation. He didn't leave you alone. He left you a road map. A perfect road map. All you have to do is attend these holy conventions, read your book, and truly, if you do the works that's prescribed and follow your instructions, you shall, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then eternal, and then eventually eternal life. Why? Because the mouth of Yahweh I have heed is spoken. Praise Yahweh. Amen. amen and amen. That's about all I'm going to do today. And I hope that some of you got something out of this. But next, uh, next week, what we'll do, we'll come in and we'll pick it up at our St. Matthew 3rd chapter and verse 13. We're going to deal with what happened uh, with the Messiah's life on this earth and then go right on down through the New Testament. And once we get through with his life, then the next thing we'll do is go in and do our deliverance step by step, not according to what I think, but according to what's written down in these prophets. That's about all I'm going to do. And uh, may Yahweh add a blessing to each and every one of you. And may he have mercy upon us all. Amen and amen. Do we have any announcements?